Are you swearing? You go ahead, do what you like. I am from North Wales, so I find it difficult not to. <laughs> when did you discover you had an interest in colour grading? So you've all, you always grade, you know, this is right. Yeah. I to tell people that you always grade, no matter what you do in, in post-production, yeah. you're grading all the time. But I wasn't sort of overtly um, uh, influenced by it or realising what I was doing. And then I got a job in a company called Wordly Production okay. in Ben Arth that um, did advertising, uh, adverts. So basically I was grading on the Flame to start mm. with. And then I realised there was a piece of software in Flame called Lustre. Okay. Uh, which is uh, basically a, a, a grading piece of software, you know, built for just grading. So I started using it, and it's a bit um, uh, sort of a bit sort of much when you look at it first. You know, there's a lot of buttons yeah. in there, but then I realised that <coughs> you know it didn't have to be a second thought thing grading. That yeah. you could actually spend a lot of time making the pictures themselves look nice. You know, um, so yeah, so that's where I started in Wordly, just sort of playing with Lustre. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, grading, grading ads, and just got into it that way. And what software would you say is the best for grading, and why? Well, um, as I said, started on Lustre, and didn't know much about everything else yeah. out there. And I know that um, the base light is uh, very popular, okay. but I've never used it myself. But I would say to anybody, um, Resolve, DaVinci Resolve, yeah. is is absolutely brilliant in my my mind for grading. Because basically, it's quite simple to use. Yeah. It's quite intuitive, um, <coughs> and it's sort of node-based sort of pipeline thing. Yeah. So everything's on screen. Uh, it's quite clear. It does. It's not difficult to use. There's not just like a plethora of buttons all over the place that yeah. is difficult to to understand. And best thing about it, the basic version's free. Yeah. So that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's excellent. You know. So basically, you know, all students who have just any interest in grading can can download it. Yeah. Um, onto their PC, PC, laptop, Mac or whatever, and just start using it. Yeah. And it's brilliant, it's brilliant, it's really, really good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. good. You enjoying it? Yeah, I love yeah. it, I love yeah. doing it. How hard would you say becoming a recognised colourist in the industry is? Yeah, well, I th it, it definitely is difficult. I mean, I have to admit that I wouldn't call myself a, a pure colourist, yeah. because in somewhere like Cardiff, <coughs> I found that you can't sort of, I, I found that myself, I can't specialise in one thing. So, yeah. you know, I, I composite, I, um, I do motion graphics, I do, um, you know, so I do um, uh, online, onlining, I do conforming, yeah. and I do grading. Um, so I, I wouldn't really know uh, how hard it would be to get into it in London or somewhere oh, like yeah. that. But, you know, I mean, like uh, like anything else, if you have a talent for it and you, you yeah. an interest in it, and you learn how to use it, like resolve and stuff, you know, I I I assume that if you start went down to London, yeah, started maybe being an assistant colorist, and then just worked your way up, yeah, of course you could, you know, oh. yeah, you can get anything, yeah. How important would you say a colorist role in the industry is? Um, well, it's it's very important, yeah. you know. I mean, basically, I think uh, going back to what I said before. If, if you do anything creative, whether it's on video or whether it's um, on stills, you, you grade all the time, yeah. you know, you, you colour correct all the time because no, nobody ever gets footage in and then just cuts it together and just puts it out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, since, since coming into the atrium, uh, what I've tried to instil is that, uh, you know, uh, maybe the grading is, a, is something that's overlooked, yeah. you know, as, as, as in sort of, you know, or, yes, I've heard of CGI, I've heard yeah. of I've heard of um, you know three um, D modeling. I've heard of comping. I've heard of VFX. Yeah. I've heard of of motion graphics. You know, but but grading everybody does it. Uh, you know, you have to, and you know, uh, yeah, it's very important because you know no Hollywood film or yeah, no true. drama on BBC or on any channel on TV um, it goes out without being graded. Yeah. You know, um, so you know unless it's uh, unless it's some sort of you know daytime sort of you know um bargain hunt or whatever <laughs> yeah. you know which is taken in and yeah given a bit of saturation yeah. a bit of contrast you know everything high end is graded yeah so it's ve very very important yeah. yeah that ties into my next question actually how overlooked do you think it is <laughs> well I, um I, I don't i don't th i don't think maybe it's overlooked in the industry yeah but maybe in universities yeah. and in education and on courses like this, it is slightly overlooked. Yeah. Um, which, which in a way is, you know, uh, if you do get it in, get into it in university, you know, it's it's very positive because you know maybe all the other universities or college courses in yeah. in Britain don't 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 do it, yeah, you know, true. and overlook it, and then 
you might study it in uh, here and then you might come out as maybe one of the only people who studied sort yeah. of you know grading or something you know so yeah. you know uh, yeah I think I think it is highly overlooked in education from what I can tell yeah but I might be wrong okay. yeah. <laughs> can you see anything changing in the future for the role as a colorist well I, I mean I, I can see I can see the software getting better yeah. um, you know if, <coughs> if resolve is as good as it is now um, I think people generally are, are, are showing more interest in, yeah. in grading and it seems to me that resolve has been built around the the grading node or the yeah. grading piece of it so obviously you know they're hanging everything else the editing fusions in there now yeah um, uh, uh, far lights for um, for uh, sound uh, mixing but they've all they've hung it around the from what I can tell they've yeah. hung it around the resolve grading um, uh, nodule so basically, I think that you know um, it's be just going to become more and more. Yeah. You know, people Definitely. are going to grade more. I think you know because they they know it's out there and they yeah, understand what true. it means. You know. How important would you say log footage is? Uh, well, yeah, it's it's vitally important because you know if if you film log, <coughs> I mean basically there's two ways that people do it, from what I can tell. Um, so basically, the cameraman will go out there and they'll they'll uh, the um, you know DOP will talk to the director. Yeah. And they'll they'll film with a LUT, yeah, but they won't burn in the LUT. They'll they'll yeah. they'll the LUT will be there to apply to the to the footage once you get it back into post. Yeah. Um, but the fact that you've got log C just means that you've got the base layer that you can push in any direction yeah. you want. So, <coughs> you know, I I once had somebody say to me, "Oh, you know, on a shoot, the 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 LUT should be burnt in." Oh, yeah. And that's just that's just craziness, yeah. you know. That's just like why would you do yeah. that, you know? Why you know? Uh, there's a way of saying in 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 this thing in Wales, you know, you can have rice and chips with your curry. Oh, right. You know why why choose ch chips? Why choose just rice? You know, you can have both things, and you can decide to go with the let. Yeah. Or you can decide to throw the let away and just start from your log C. You know. Yeah. So yeah, vitally important. Yeah. How long can grading take on various shots? Oh. God, how how long's a piece of string? You know, <laughs> it's um, it's it's like really nuanced grading. I think yeah. compared to um, comping, especially you know, or VFX. You know, if if you're if you're keying, if you film somebody on green, green screen, yeah. and you're keying them onto a onto a background or whatever, yeah. you know, basically you, you work on it, and then suddenly it'll be like, oh yes, that that person looks as if they're yeah. in part of that shot. Or if you're fixing something, uh, you know, in a shot, um, and you're getting rid of something like a window or whatever, you, you get rid of it. Yes, it looks right or it looks wrong. Yeah. Where, whereas with grading, it's like it's. I mean, you could you could grade the same shot for days. You yeah. Know what I mean? you, it, until somebody tells you they're happy with it. That's why I think it's, it's important when you grade. Well, I find it important to grade with a director. Yeah. <coughs> or at least show the director after a while what you're doing because. You know, you go down the rabbit hole, yeah. and you can, oh, you can get totally lost. You know, like tweaking and and, and, and you know, just like adding different bits, thinking, oh, I can push that further. Yeah, yeah you, you could, you could, you could spend days on a, on a project. You know, so yeah. I think that's why it's important that a you have a budget and yeah. b you have a time limit. You know, because yeah, that's, that's what forces you to to work quicker. That's, really, that's true. Yeah. How close do you work with the client slash director? Um, you know, uh, vitally important to work with a director. Yeah. Clients not so much so I don't think because once you've got uh, you know once you've got the director on board yeah. on site you know you basically just show the client that and hopefully the director <coughs> will be able to you know to, to say right this is what we wanted and this yeah. is what we delivered whereas if you're uh, I, I, I've I've almost never had a um, client come in and go uh, you know oh I don't, don't like the grade they they yeah. usually like sort of ooh looks great Ooh. or whatever you know yeah um uh so yeah but i mean uh, but i mean to go back on that point to reinforce it you know i've plenty of times i've worked um on my own grading without a director yeah because they're busy doing another job without yeah. filming or something and you know if i finished the day grading and then i've i've left and gone home and then i've i've come back in the morning and i've opened the door switched the monitors on and gone what the fuck <laughs> was that you know just like yeah just th didn't look like like anything yeah. just looked bad you know just looked um i was just thinking what, what what were you thinking you know and then basically you just start from scratch but if you've got somebody there uh yeah, to work with right direction. exactly they, they're yeah. there to sort of you know corral you in a way 
you know, and, and you can suggest things, they can suggest things. Yeah, so I, fi I find grading alone quite, quite difficult, yeah. you know. I, I, I'm not saying you can grade for a couple of hours and then get, as long as you get somebody in uh, and have a look, and, and even if the director's on it, get somebody else in, Yeah. you know, and get them to look at it and say, what do you think of it? You know, I think yeah. that helps. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, what is the key to becoming a great colourist such as yourself? <laughs> Uh, being from North Wales. No. Um, <laughs> oh well, I'm out there. I don't know. I don't think there is a. I, I can't. I, I slid into it. Yeah. And you know, I, th I think it's just. I mean, it's common sense. You know, I mean, as long as you're not colour blind, yeah. uh, you know, which is a disadvantage. You know, everybody knows. You know, you you watch telly, and if you're watching some drama, you can, yeah. you sit there going, oh god, that looks nice. Yeah. You know. So basically, as long as you've got two. Pair, pair, pair of eyes, you know, uh, two pairs of eyes, two eyes, <laughs> or a pair of eyes, um, and and you can see what looks good. Yeah. I don't think I don't think you should stop anybody really oh. from being a good colorist. Yeah. 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 Oh, fair enough. What made you want to start freelancing? Well, basically, um, when I left university, um, I got a job in uh, on this live TV program, uh, doing broadcast broadcast graphics, and I was there for ten years. Yeah. Got itchy feet, and then I went to this other company for another ten years and uh, then got another job in another company uh, for six years. Yeah. And then, you know, after 26 years in the business, I just thought, you know, um, if, if there's a time to try being freelance, oh, yeah. now's the time. So I just thought, you know, give it a go, Why see how it goes. Yeah. yeah, exactly, see how it goes. And um, yeah, I've, it's, been, it's been an eye-opener, really. Yeah. You know, there's disadvantages, there's advantages like anything else you do. Exactly. You know, um, uh, you know one disadvantage is, I'm, commuting to London and, and Bristol to oh, work. Yeah. Another one is, you know, uh, the fact that, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the nice thing, sorry, is the fact that you work with loads of different companies on, yeah. on a broader range of stuff um, and meet really nice people. Yeah. You know, so um, I've worked, uh, since becoming freelance two years ago, I've worked on children's programmes for CBBC and Disney. I've worked on adverts for, um, you know, for um, furniture companies. I worked for promos for S uh, for um, uh, for um, the WRU oh, yeah. and Visit Wales, and I've worked on uh, promo stuff for BBC. So there's a lot, a wide range yeah, in the freelance world of different stuff you can do. Oh, you know, cool. yeah. Yeah. <coughs> How did you get your first few clients? Then? Well, basically, it started slowly. Yeah. Um, and then you know the the most important thing when you get freelance, go freelance, is um, you need to go out and, and see people, yeah. obviously. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that being in the business for 26 years beforehand, what oh, was yeah. what was this this was advantageous? Of course it was because you you, you know you know people and yeah. you know you've worked with them before in other places and then you can go and talk to them and and, and yeah. it's not like you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm fresh out of college you know give me yeah. a chance whatever. Um, but I, if I had one tip for um, anybody going leaving college and trying to get work yeah. freelance, is I, I would maybe try an email okay. first, but then I would call, I would yeah. phone them, because it's, e it's really easy to not reply to an email. That's true. And I think, I think from what I hear, which I think is quite impolite actually, loads of people send stuff out and, and you never, nobody even answers yeah. them, you know, which is, which is really bad, I think. Um, so I think when you phone people, and I know it's difficult, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the type of person that just like sort of grabs the phone and, and yeah. you have to like, okay, I'm going to call these people now and then, you know, but then at least you're engaging with them, you know. Forces them to Yeah, answer. it forces yeah. them to, to do something. Now they can tell you to fuck off, which is the worst <laughs> yeah. case scenario, yeah. or they can say, yeah, come in for a coffee, you know, come, come, yeah. and, come and see us, you know, yes, yeah, actually. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the second job I had, which was um, in a company called Eclipse Creative, yeah. it was just, it was just phoning around and I just phoned and, and luck plays a big part in it. Oh, yeah. And I, f I phoned this company, uh, Clips Creative, and they basically said, oh, do you know what? We're looking for a trainee DS operator, which and DS, yeah. software manager DS was a piece of, of compositing software. Well, yeah, actually, you, you phoned a, a good time. You know, we're looking for a DS operator. And I went in, no interview process. They just gave me six really? months trial period, yeah. And oh. I, I was working for 10 years. And the same with wor with Wordly. Um, I called them as well. Yeah. Excuse me, called them as well. And they said, oh, actually, come in and talk to us. And one of their flame operators had left to move oh. to Finland or Norway <laughs> or somewhere, and they were they were looking for a trainee flame That's operator. Perfect, yeah. So you know, you never know. 
you know yeah. and, and if you do phone and phone as many people as you can yes obviously the law of averages to say that you're not going to get luck with everyone yeah. you know and, and people are going to say don't ask me again but you never know so you know i would that's, say yeah, phone true. phone people you know that's good advice thank you is building an online presence essential for freelancing i would say for people starting out yes yeah for me less so mm -hmm. because i because i've been around for 26 years yeah. i do have a website oh yeah um uh, and I haven't updated for, for, for a while, naughty boy. <laughs> so I need to get some new stuff on there. Yeah. But I think for me, it's more word of mouth. You yeah, know, you yeah. do a good job for somebody. Somebody says, or, you know, oh, I want a colorist. Or I've had that oh, today, yeah. actually. Oh, yeah. I got a company got in touch with me and said, you know, we've been given your name by a person we know. Oh, that's cool, yeah. And, and basically, I think there's a job next Thursday and Friday from it. But if you're starting out, and I would advise you and your colleagues yeah. to, yes, probably you do need A, a website, yeah. um, and B, you know, uh, you're much better at this. I don't even have Facebook, <laughs> right? I've got, I've got a LinkedIn, oh, yeah. but I almost never use it, and some <laughs> weird people want to get into contact with me, but I, yeah, so I say yes. I, I, I'm not on Twitter. Yeah. I'm not on Instagram or anything like that, yeah. but I'm, I'm sure that you are. You know, yeah. yeah, exactly, and that's the way of pushing yourself, isn't it? You know, yeah, exactly. You're much more savvy than I am uh, in in that media, in that social media uh, sense. So yeah, I would say it's vitally important because okay, how yeah. how else are that's, people going to yeah. see your stuff? You know. How does being a freelancer affect your workflow? Can you have days with little amounts of work and days with like too much? Work? Oh God, yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, basically, I would I would say freelancing is like spinning plates. <laughs> it's like having it's like having eight plates on sticks spinning at the same time. <laughs> My wife told me the first tip, she said, when you freelance, once you get four or five clients, don't fret too much about the time where you're not working. Yeah. Don't worry too much, just enjoy it. And yeah, she's right. She's spot on. She's right about everything. And, I, and, I, and also a very, very important thing is, which I mentioned when I, when I introduced myself last May, yeah. is just be pleasant and nice and, and make yourself, in a way, indispensable. You know, in my career, I've, I've, I've found out that people prefer to work with somebody who's good to work with rather than super talented in a certain piece of software. There's always something that you enjoy in every job, well, I found, um, and there's always something you hate in every job. So, I find this case study brief to actually be very useful in helping me to understand the various aspects of freelancing and collaborating. I'm very grateful Gavin took the time to sit down with me and answer my questions, and though at the whole process of contacting him to the interview, he was responsive, understanding, and a general nice guy. I learned a lot about the process of freelancing during this brief, which I didn't quite understand so well beforehand, and I now know a lot about first and second penciling, where a company will ask you to work and then pencil you independent of schedules. I also know not to worry when work is limited or too much, just to enjoy the time I have doing it. The main thing I have learned during this interview is that it's essential to build an online presence, as a lot of companies will look for you on sites such as LinkedIn, etc. I'll definitely need an online presence to build good contacts and after a while those said contacts might give a good word about you to other contacts getting you work that way. Um, I also learned a lot about being a colourist as well which is really interesting. It's also cool how Gavin confirmed that absolutely everything is colour graded and nothing will be released without being colour corrected or graded including daytime shows like Bargain Hunt. I've learned the importance of log footage and how essential that is to a colourist and for getting a good end result. But most importantly, I've learned how grading is very much an overlooked part of visual effects, especially for audiences, as it's more invisible VFX, as the audience are more focused on other things. But without grading, their favourite shows and films would definitely not be the same.